talk about three different exercises you can do that you probably aren't doing right now that are gonna really work this little section of your bate, of your bate. Um, abs, right, we all want them. We all know planks and crunches and all that stuff. Um, but there are some things that you can do that you probably aren't doing that can be pretty effective in terms of building uh, a nice little midsection that helps support your posture, uh, helps carve a little, ooh, little definition, um, and allows you to remain healthy and vibrant and all of that stuff. Uh, so first exercise, since I'm standing, we're gonna start with this one. Um, a high knee, right? So this exercise by itself is nothing, right? I'm just marching, right? But if I can get that knee higher than that hip, I'm getting into hip flexion, right? And if you feel what that's doing right here, you're gonna notice that every time you drive a knee up, that's gonna tense up a little bit, right? So it's better to point that toe up than to drag it down. Because if you drag that foot down like this, more likely that knee's gonna come here and you're gonna push your hip back a little bit like this to get there, right? And so you're gonna start to get that little crunch in with the upper body. Right now, what I wanna do is get my hip flexors to work and start to tense up that lower section of the abdominals, right? So now, what I can do with that is start to turn that into something somewhat explosive or plyometric. And again, once we speed this up, right? When we speed this up, we can do one or two things. We can march faster, or we can start to turn that into a run. What happens with people when they turn it into a run, they start leaning backwards like this. And that's cool. I don't know why you do it. Um, I do because it's easier to get there. Uh, but you want to stay upright, tall, drive that knee up. Keep that foot pointed up. All right, so that's the first one, standing. So these next two, we're going to do on the ground prone. So first one, some of us have done this before. If you've been in this gym, you've definitely done it. Um, we're going to talk about a renegade row. So this is, we we'll call it anti-rotation. So that was static, sorry, that was not static. That was a dynamic ab exercise. This one's gonna be more of what you would consider static or anti-rotation. So we're gonna get into a push-up position. For some of you guys, a wider foot position is gonna help you a lot to understand what you're trying to accomplish in this movement. Um, the more narrow your stance gets, the harder this ab exercise is gonna be. The more narrow your hands get, easier the exercise is going to be. So I'm going to start with my hands narrow and my feet wide. All right. From here, I'm just going to try to pull one hand off the ground without letting my hips turn any which way. All right. So if I look here, watch just my hips. All right. I'm going to pull my hand up, but I don't want my hips to go anywhere. Right? Now I'm going to do that same thing with my opposite hand. I don't want my hips to go anywhere. Right? So what I'm doing is resisting rotation side to side. Now if you've never done that, or if you have done it, and you're like, ah, it doesn't feel that great, right? you're probably letting your hips go wherever they want. Right? What happens is people will get into that position. They'll say, oh, I'm going to bring my right hand up. So the right hip opens up and they open up here. Sure, this is great, I can stay here forever. All right? Keep that hip down, pointed into the ground, and then try to do the same thing. And what you'll see a lot of people do is when they bring that right hand up, their left foot will come up off the ground. All right? That's telling you, hey, you don't have as much stabilization as you think you do, um, and you don't have as much control as you think you do. So as you get the hands further apart, as you get the feet closer together, this becomes much more challenging, right? So you'll notice right now that my hips are gonna go from side to side. 
because I've got a much harder version and it's way more challenging for me to keep my hips aligned and me to keep my body quiet, right? Because my body really wants to rip side to side there. All right, so that's exercise number two. Exercise number three, again, we're in that push up, that prone position, and we're gonna do what is called a kick through. There's gonna be a couple different versions of this that I'm gonna show you as well. All right, so push up position. All we're gonna do is replace one hand with the opposite foot. So I'm gonna take my right foot, left hand. I'm gonna take my left hand out of the equation, put my right foot where it was at. And I'm gonna come back. Now I'm gonna take my right hand, left foot. Boom. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Now, again, we can really interpret this multiple ways. If you want more movement, you can start to play around with moving the body as well. All right, so I can go here and I can say, hey, I'm gonna try to get all the way through, all right, and bend that back leg and open up the chest, or I can really get into the abs and say, I don't want my upper body to really move from facing down that floor, right? And I'm just gonna tap that foot and tap that foot and tap that foot. So both of those are great for the abs. One is a little bit more dynamic, more mobility, and the other one's like really, really getting into Ooh, that one kind of cramps up, right? So with these three movements, what I would do is, if you're gonna do abs, like, oh, let me do an ab workout. I would do those three movements, 30 seconds each, probably three times through, see how that feels, and then just work on cleaning it up, and cleaning it up, and cleaning it up, right? Getting better quality movement every single time you do. That's all. That's all, folks.